Welcome back to another one of my CV2 tutorials. As I said in the previous video, it's good to be back and I hope that my tutorials will help you further along your CV2 journey. So without any intro talk, let's get into my tutorial. So today's tutorial will go over pistons, rotators and emitters, which you can also use for other miscellaneous objects in the game. Before I get into the CV2 aspect of the video, I also spawned in the CV1 versions of our new things. So, as you can see, many of you are probably very familiar with what these are. So we got a piston, rotator, and emitter, as said above, but these are CV1. The CV1s, control-wise, did not have much. They had an on and off switch and speed. Same as the rotator, it had an on and off switch and rotation speed. Now, many of you know that uh, control-wise, it was not perfect. CV1 was limited, but that's what CV2 fixes. We are not limited to these few settings. We can monitor and change values in real time, things that we could only configure once on our CV1 objects that we cannot change further unless we updated the rule. So let's delete CV1 and get on to with CV2. So first off, we have a piston, and with the knowledge I'll be telling you right now, you can easily use it for a rotator. So, let's look at the inputs of our piston. The inputs have play, stop, reverse, speed, and max distance. Now, generally speaking, you can probably already know what these mean. They tell you what they are. So, this execution chip starts or plays our gizmo which means that stock settings, we click it and it'll go up until it reaches our limit, which we have our max distance here. The stop will obviously stop it and reverse. We'll just reverse it into the other direction the piston was currently going. So for example, if we played it right now, it will go up and if we, if we execute the reverse, it will come back down. Speed, as it already explains, defines how fast the gizmo is going. And the max distance, as I've said before, is a limit to how far our piston can go. Now on our output side, we have play, stop and reverse again, which means as soon as the left side of it will be executed, the right side will output a signal if we need it. So, for, so these are completely the same, just that these put out a signal as soon as these ones are executed. We have a finished one, which only executes after our piston is finished with its movement, and distance tells us how far the pistons come. So we can monitor and set limits for certain, let's say, PVPs or parkour maps. And with that knowledge, we can go over to rotator. And see so we have play, stop, reverse as the same as that. We only have speed here, of course, because it's rotating at a 360 degree angle, because we can't do much more. We can't limit it because if we want to limit it, we're gonna we're going to use the rotation. So we could set a limit. If our rotator reaches, let's say, 180 degrees, we are going to stop our rotator. And a target hit is, well, as it said, <laughs> target hit when it hits a target that we give it. Now the emitter, which again, as I said before, you can use for other miscellaneous objects such as spawners. Because a lot of CV2 circuitry is very self-explanatory. It tells you what, what it does. You just have to wire it up and let it do its thing. So start, stop, and set looping. Start and stop, we already know. Set looping means that if we want it to loop, now let's say we want it to loop, right? At the moment, it's set to false, but we can change this to true. And as soon as we execute our set looping pin right here, it's going to set Set it to loop, since this right here is true, but if we set it to false and execute it, it will no longer loop. Then we have set size, set speed, and set color. It will set the size to what it has here, same for the speed and color. So let's actually use one of these. So for my demonstration, I'll be using a piston V2. Now I'll going, I'm going to be spawning in a button, like last time. Circuits. Click components and button. So what I'm gonna do is while I'm going to be holding down my button, the circuit is going to be going to go up. 
but as soon as I release my button, the circuit's going to go down. How do we do that? Pretty simple. We're going to connect our pressed on our play and our released on our reverse, which means when I push the button and I hold it, the play will be executed. But as soon as I release my button, the reverse will be executed. So let me show you. You can let it go up all the way and release it. And it's coming back down. Now let me demonstrate stop as well, but I'm pretty sure you already know what it is. So I'll hold it and stop it like that and we can keep going. So yeah, this was a very simple, brief and short explanation of pistons, rotators and pretty much any miscellaneous object. Now I know I did not cover as many miscellaneous objects as I did in my previous tutorial a year ago, and that is because most of them work in a very similar way. They tell you what they do, and you just execute them to actually do it. Now, if you might want to see more miscellaneous circuits being demonstrated in my tutorials, feel free to tell me in the comments below. I'll be glad to do it. So yeah, that does it for today. If you like it, like and subscribe. Tell me in the comments what you think of my tutorial so far. I will make sure to make more and expand my content as well, as far as CV2 goes. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I'll and I also hope I'll be seeing you in the next one.